under the Controlled Substances Act and Corollary State Law, the growth, trafficking, sale, possession, or consumption of psychedelics may be a felony punishable by imprisonment, fines, forfeiture of property, or some combination thereof. Psychedelic X is for general information only. Information provided on the show does not constitute legal advice, nor does your listening to the show create an attorney-client relationship with the host. Hello, I'm attorney Gary Smith, and I want to welcome you to another episode of Psychedelic Alex, The Law of Psychedelics, my ongoing exploration of the question of the law of psychedelics. Hello, everybody. This is Gary Smith, and I want to thank you for tuning in to Psychedelic Alex for another open letter from me to the Law and Regulatory Committee of the Psychedelic Bar Association. For those of you who are regular listeners of the show, or even if you're brand new, I will tell you there is a national, well, possibly international, Psychedelic Bar Association of which I am a member. And the association has a bunch of different committees, including the Law and Regulatory Committee of which I am the committee steward. And the committee has taken on a variety of different tasks, but the big one we're working on now is a model act that is intended to bring psychedelics from their place of prohibition into some level of uh, regulatory structure at the state level. We're not looking to leverage the federal law yet, but that's coming too. But in the meantime, we're working on a model act that can be adopted at the state level, and that project has officially begun. Indeed, we had our first meeting this week with the committee. And the Law and Regulatory Committee has started by first uh, generating a master list that we're still working on. Uh, we're officially calling, well, we're not calling it anything, but we should probably give it a name. Uh, I'm just going to call it the big list or the big messy list because right now that's all it is. So what is the big messy list? What is it meant to do? What are we meant to do with it? And where do we take it? So the big messy list is the starting point. It's all of us coming together and throwing onto the big messy list uh, just ideas, topics, headings, concepts, anything we think we might want, need, or desire to touch upon in the coming months as we start to dial this program in and craft the model act. So right now the big list is meant to just identify issues that we think may or may not come into play. And I say it's a big messy list because right now there's literally no organization to it, nor is there meant to be. Our next step will be, after we're kind of done generating the big list, although it's going to be by nature an ongoing project, because as we come up with more ideas, the list will grow. But the next step, once we're done generating the primary big messy list, is to then start to organize it by topics, headings, and we'll have conversation in the committees about that, all aimed at trying to get some semblance of a structure starting to form into the list. So we'll go from a big messy list to a more refined uh, structured list. And from that structured list, we'll then be able to really dial in on discrete topics and the issues we need to touch upon in those discrete topics. So since we're officially started and we've got a big messy list and there are some people who weren't able to attend the LARC meeting this week, I thought I'd make this video just to catch you up and also tell you what's currently on the big messy list and invite you to submit more. Also, for listeners of my podcast who aren't members of the LARC or aren't attorneys, if you've got ideas that you think we should be looking at, I absolutely want to hear from you. Um, I'm not guaranteeing every idea is a good one, but if you don't ask, we'll never know. So if you've got ideas, please email the show. I'm, I'm happy to look at those ideas and take them to the Law and Regulatory Committee for consideration. So here's the list as it currently exists. I'll just read it to you. It's nothing fancy or special, but... Again, it's in no semblance of order or, or logic or meaning. It was just stream of consciousness as each of us took a whack at listing ideas. So here it is. The list as it currently exists as of ooh, 23 September 2022. No particular order. All right. We're interested in looking at differences based on compounds, natural versus synthetics, product roadmap, microdosing, public safety and harm reduction, children, Public licensing, facility licensing, industrialization versus home craft or grassroots, uh, proxy caregivers, insurance issues, immunity for practitioners, facilities, manufacturers, immunities and protections for licensed practitioners from their licensing boards, tenant protection for presence, public funding from tax general funds, data collection, privacy, public foraging rights, 
public agent immunity for participating in the public administration of the state program, list of permissible amendments a legislature can make to the act, that's important in states where this might be passed by a public initiative, uh, assurance of meeting of single subject standard, again, another issue we would need to address in states that might consider running this by public initiative, uh, program taxation and tax spending earmarks, reciprocity, uh, drug products versus multimodal, statutory redefinition of certain plants as non-drugs or non-scheduled, uh, creation of a lower level iteration of permissible therapy or, or alternatives to therapy that would fall outside of or be recognized by existing mental health laws, uh, standards for trip sitters, session providers and facilitators, public education, participant education, establishment of a standard curricula, uh, new nomenclature, um, creation of a set of history and findings and a preamble for the Model Act, uh, which could include or should include historical record, medical and mental health support, and religious and spiritual support, uh, both from scientific and scholarly as well as historical perspectives. Uh, let's see, what else do we have on the list? Then it keeps going. Uh, religious protections and RIFRA concerns. Medical recommendation model versus some other model. Uh, referral trough for persons who partake uh, but want access to other mental health care or treatments. Uh, permissible locations to produce, partake, process, or store. Zoning protections, revocation standards, licensing standards, facility ownership standards. Codification of Conant versus Walters, uh, which is a First Amendment cannabis case, by the way. Uh, dosage, concentration, and content standards, permissible species or species protections for natural substances, home cultivation, home delivery and administration services, persons that should be excluded from participating, uh, creation of a new state agency or blending this proposed program into existing state agencies, uh, advertising, what is and is not permissible, and where and when advertising is permissible, uh, possible consideration of a sunset provision in the model. Uh, unprocessed products versus processed products. Is there a difference and should it be addressed? Lab testing, including lab standards and lists of required tests. Reparations, indigenous reciprocity and benefit honoring. Equitable access, environmental preservation, legalization versus decrim. That's, that's going to be an interesting one to talk about. Uh, nonprofit versus for-profit structures, another tough conversation. Uh, regulatory structures, cultural appropriation issues, medical versus non-medical use, post-capitalism, incrementalism, psychedelic exceptionalism, criminal drug conviction, ah, let me try that one again, criminal drug conviction disenfranchisement, cultural humility and competence, uh, ability of local jurisdictions to opt out, uh, involvement of in-state activists versus out-of-state lobbyists in crafting legislation. Uh, client privacy consent and mandatory data collect. Oh, somebody du duplicated that one. Sorry. Uh, discretion left to regulatory agencies. Yeah. Uh, tax, including 280E concerns and state tax exemptions. Uh, and also interstate commerce between consenting states, which could also include, I suspect, interstate commerce packs, which are a thing. Uh, not common, but they're a thing. Uh, anyway, that's the first list that the Law and Regulatory Committee has come up with thus far in really, honestly, barely a week that we've been working on this. And we're still working on the big list. So for those of you who are members of the Law and Regulatory Committee, I want to make you aware this list is available to you. Uh, it's uh, stored on a Google Drive. And if you reach out to Madeline or Hadass, they can get you access if you haven't already gotten access. And once you have access, you'll be able not only to see the list, but add to it. So if you've got items you want to add, please. Uh, there's literally nothing that's inappropriate for the list. If you can think of anything at all that is worth conversation or at least worth considering for conversation, please do add it to the list. And again, in the weeks and months to come, we're going to be taking this list, refining it, we're going to organize it. Uh, we'll probably have to come up with some agreeable uh, structure or hierarchy with headings and then subparts. But that's where we're headed next over the next few weeks. So Anyway, that's the update. If you missed our LARC meeting this week, eh, that's pretty much it. We got the list going. Uh, beyond that, I also, at the beginning of our meeting, 
introduced to the Law and Regulatory Committee the uh, work I've been doing behind the scenes in support of this uh, Model Act effort. And what I've been pitching is that we should be looking eventually to create a website that uh, the committee and really all the members of the Psychedelic Bar Association can access, but also have some element of what we're working on have a public face. So the website in my vision here would be uh, both public facing and also private access only for members. Uh, I am at task right now of getting bids and, and estimates and proposals from vendors, which I'm hoping to package up and then pitch to the Psychedelic Bar Association board, hoping to win their approval on, on the idea. Um, remember, I'm just the committee steward. I'm not a board member. I have no authority to do any of these things unilaterally. So I'm just gathering data and sharing it with the board, hoping that it resonates. But that's what's going on. But in the meantime, the Model Act is officially, officially underway, and I couldn't be happier. So uh, stay tuned. A lot more news on this is coming. Take care. Have a question about psychedelics and the law? You're welcome to submit them. Please send your questions to admin at psychedelicalex.com. Submission of questions is not an assurance that they will be used on the show. Also, please be aware that neither the submission of a question nor a response creates an attorney-client privilege between you and the show's host, nor does an answer constitute legal advice. Information provided is for general purposes only. If you need legal counsel, you should hire competent counsel in your community. Thank mm-hmm. you.